have heard everything. You're all graduates of the spotted lanternfly course of the day. Um, I've certainly learned a lot. But there is a lot of questions. And like we said, they're, they're, they're adapting to the United States. Um, different environments, no, pest, no prey pressure on them at this stage of the game outside of us trying to control them in Pennsylvania at this stage of the game. Um, so what are we doing? Since they found it in Pennsylvania, came in in the stone, international stone trade from a dealer in Pennsylvania, we've been doing for the last three years, going to stone, uh, stone fruit, stone, uh, stone yards that get material from Pennsylvania to look for any stage of spider and lantern fly. The perimeter, the stone itself, looking at pallets, looking for egg masses, haven't found anything, so that's a good thing. Um, like I said before, we had three regulatory incidences in the state this winter. Um, two dead adults and, and the, the Christmas tree hatching. So we've had that, so, and it's been spreading the whole time, um, going, coming up from Pennsylvania, kind of going towards that Warren County, Hunterdon County border. So that's where one of the finds of the hitchhiking was in that zone. Um, that's where I would anticipate the crossing, the major crossing. And there's a lot of little bridges, there's a lot of traffic going back and forth for auctions and whatever, trades and that kind of stuff in the summertime, um, you know, flea markets. That, so there's a lot of opportunity for that hitchhiking to go on. To cut Christmas tree trade next, you know, next Christmas. Um, that's certainly an option that no one ever knew of before until this year. So we're looking for those things. Our game plan is to have a, set up two crews. We don't have a lot of staff, but set up two crews to do one kilometer grid surveys from Hunterdon County all the way down to Camden County, along the, starting at the river, working their way out, coming inland in New Jersey, looking for a tree of heaven, because it's everywhere, but we don't, don't ask me where it is. But the more you look for it, there it is. You know, um, we were in Williamstown the other day looking at um, um, ride equipment that goes from New Jersey into the quarantine zone of Pennsylvania. That's their, that's their business. Um, so we looked for old egg masses, new egg masses to make sure that they're not accidentally transporting things. Tree of Heaven, Tiffany found it was 40 feet tall, DBH, 8 to 10. I'm used to the little scrubby stuff, um, but they have big trees, you know. So we have to find that. We at the same time looking for, for a spotter and lantern fly. So two crews doing that is the game plan. We have another crew who's going to be looking at that high risk movement areas, the truck drop, the truck stops, the way stations. There's very few of those that are active anymore, but those. Um, a lot of outreach material for commodity groups, for the trucking industry, the railroad industry. Um, whoever we can think of. Pretty much everyone's impacted by this, so there's every industry known to man. Um, so we're doing that. Um, that's our game plan. And we have a rapid response team set up, hopefully, we never have to use them, um, to if we found an infestation or if we found live stages, nymphs or adults, to go in and do a contact, quick and dirty contact spray, spot treatment of those live insects, followed up with tree banding and, and bark sprays to make sure that we didn't miss anything. That's kind of the game plan right now. It's a fluid game plan because we're not like Pennsylvania. They have a mess. Um, and we're trying to keep it out of the state. And it is a question of it will come here. You know, um, how many Christmas trees that people threw in the backyard or in the woods that could have had egg masses, we won't know until this spring. Um, so once the weather breaks, we'll have a better handle on do we have those kind of hot spots or don't we? Did we luck out again for another year? So that's kind of where we're at. Um, it's like a, you have the quarantine zone, you have that, take the literature. Um, feel free to call us, feel free to use our email address for questions, send us photos of things that you see. We've had in the past a lot of um, misidentifications, especially with that, four in, that fourth instar that's red. People see box elder bugs in October, it's red, must be spotted in lanternfly. So we're in the process of developing a website and a web page to show what people commonly, just because of the color, you know, misidentify. So we're in the process of setting up those things. We're kind of slow because we don't have it here, but as time goes on, 
we have to change our game plan. So that's our basic game plan of what we're looking for um, this spring into this summer, into this season, we'll put it that way. And we're working closely with USDA. We work together, doing and conducting inspections. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, it won't be as bad as everyone makes it sound, or it won't be as bad as Pennsylvania has it right now. But um, that's what happens. So they do, they do inspections, they do growing season inspections. The cut Christmas tree guys, I know that they're under compliance, the ones who are shipping to New York, to, to New Jersey, to, uh, to Delaware, those kind of places. Um, but they are, you saw the pictures, and they weren't, it looks better on the screen. It was really hard to see those egg masses. So you could do, you could stare at that almost like bagworm. You ever hand removed bagworm from a tree? You've taken all day picking them off. You've gotten them all. You've gotten buckets of them. And you turn around like this, and you take a drink of water, and you turn around, and you go, there's 30 right there. I could have dismissed them right where I was just looking. So that's very easy to do. That's the problem. Um, that's the scary problem. So that goes on, but things still fall through the cracks. You know? um, and so that's why we have to be vigilant on our side. And that's for everybody, not just us. There's only a few of us. There's more of you. Um, and so we have to do a, a good job of getting that word out that everyone has to kind of get involved to keep it at bay. And by us keeping it at bay out of our state, Pennsylvania, given time, hopefully can get a handle on and, and do some eradication efforts and not get down there. And that would all be kind of be a better place to be. You know, to eradicate. Yes? Just the one thing that most retailers have to be careful of is most of the pottery they buy today comes from Vietnam. That's correct, right. So they come in a container, and they could be very easily on that pilot. Right, right. And they get inspected by, um, not Homeland Security, um, um, well, USDA does inspections, and uh, border, CBP, um, so Customs and Borders. So they, they're for the ports and the shipping industry. They get inspected in the ports to try to, so that that doesn't happen, to get, to, but it can happen. Things can happen, you know. It's not a 100% inspection. There's no way with, with the amount of shipping that comes in. Um, and New Jersey is a, is a, um, oh, what do you call it? A, 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 yeah, it's a super port. I mean, it comes in JFK in New York, and, and it's trucked all over the country. It just goes right through New Jersey, you know. So, you know, we're the interstate state. So we can get a lot of insects coming through the ports that way, and they do a very good job at the ports with what they have. Um, so this bug is just one of many. It makes our, my life not so boring. There's never a dull moment. We'll put it that way. Um, so do your best. Reach out. You know, pass the word on. There is information. The same things. The same flyers that you have. We have on our website. You know, New Jersey Department of Ag main website under hot topics on the bottom right. You can reproduce those. You have the quarantine zone. Quarantine zone looks like it does because when Pennsylvania first started, the core zone, the yellows and oranges and blues. They were quarantining municipality by municipality. Then it got ungodly and ridiculous because they were finding it every place they were looking as it was growing out. No, that's okay. But as it was growing out, and so they, did, they changed it to quarantining counties, so hence the bigger green zone. Um, but it is not in western Pennsylvania, so if you're in maybe central western Pennsylvania, they haven't, they've surveyed there, but they haven't found it there yet. Not to say it's not going to go there. There's, all, there's a, a large amount of railroad that concerns me, um, and sidings and just tracks where the empty cars are just there. And the way the railroads work, they'll sit there for a year, two years, six months, who knows, until they need the car. They move it from point A to point B, park it there for six months, fill it, and haul it to Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. So who knows where this could get moved, just in the rail yard. And they're not very free with information or permission for survey. It's a very bureaucratic, worse than government, bureaucratic process to get permission to legally go on their property to survey for tree of heaven. So we have to try to diplomatically work with them for that to happen. So. There was a question before about uh, how you tell the difference between a male and a female and this trees. Uh, I found that the Cooper Intelligence is I think that how to use Google. And I just looked up and it said that the male trees have three to four times the number of flowers as Okay. 
If I was a joke teller, that was that opened the door, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to punt. <laughs> I'll just put my foot in my mouth, but thank you. I don't know. And USDA, I'm sure the feds have, have, have put staff overseas to the, the South Korea and Japan to find out about what, what to answer that question. And then the next question goes, biocontrol takes a long time to get set up. Before it gets to the point of release, let's just say they found something tomorrow. They have to bring it to the United States, throw it in amazing quarantine facilities that nothing gets out. And they have to make sure that that released organism isn't going to cause more damage than what you're trying to control. So it takes a long time, 10, 15 years maybe, before it finally gets to the point that they give it to, um, we have a beneficial insect lab, so they give it to folks like us to rear colonies to go disperse and ship out and put in the environment. So it takes a long time to get to that point. And that's, like I said, 10, 15 years down the road. If they found it today, I don't know if they found anything yet. Who knows? You know? No, it's been, it came from there, and I don't know how long it was there. So it's been in South Korea, and it's been in Japan. It's an Asian species. It's native to Asia. So how long? I don't know. They say, don't park under trees, because that's where they could hop into your car in the back of your bed of your truck, crawl underneath your wheel wells. You don't know they're there. Jump on your clothes. So if you know you're going there, kind of inspect Well, they do a lot of, they do a lot of, th and, uh, right, I'm not a, I'm not a, they have an amazing public outreach group that I met once or twice. They, their social media is like crazy, and I'm not a social media guy either, so I wouldn't know. But, so they say, it's, it's crazy, and they spend a fortune on it, and they have 17,000 hits and 1,500 phone calls that they're answering questions and investigating and doing all this stuff. But you're right, I don't see... I don't see billboards. I don't see that kind of stuff. You know, who knows? With the money that they're getting or supposed to be getting, maybe they're going to start that tactic because I haven't seen that on the roads. You don't see signs. You don't see, you know. We have none here, sir. I have to say that because we don't. We had three regulatory incidents. So we had five nymphs that hatched out of, so we had, what do they say, 50? So... And that was inside a house. So closed container, nuke the tree, nuke the, nuke the insects, we're good. And two dead adults, which would have hitchhiked across because they were going from Asbury to uh, an old folks home in eastern Pennsylvania. That was a hot spot in Pennsylvania. And they found that they discovered the dead insect in their car in December. Who knows when it was there? Could have been October when it got there. Who knows? They don't know. They just go, oh, I heard about this. Let me send a picture. And we went, oh, great. This is fantastic. So that's how we found that. And then they, the other one was a box of apples, a dead adult in a box of apples. And the apples came from a quarantine zone in Pennsylvania, a quarantine, an orchard in the quarantine zone in Pennsylvania. Is it an accident? Did it die in the box? Was it dead before it got in the box? Who knows? There's no way you're ever going to know any of that. So, so far, that's where we're at. They could do it, yeah, that, could, that gets into bad PR, though. When you start promoting burning, I think, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure DP would be on me for that one. Um, but chipping, chipping, chipping would destroy the egg mass is enough that the odds of anything coming out of that mechanical damage would be slim to almost none. You could go down that road. And so this year, in advance of, and I thought of this, and I, I put NJNLA, NJNLA, you're NJNLA, NJ, League of Municipalities, there's too many NJs. But, so League of Municipalities, they have a weekly newsletter to the municipalities that they blast out to all of them. And so I asked them, can you put in a little blurb about spotted lanternfly? And after the Christmas season, could you, instead of, instead of just letting people throw, throwing the trees in the backyard, can you chip up when the municipalities are picking up the trees? Can you chip them? We didn't say burn. We don't like to say burn a whole lot, and I get in trouble for that. But, or, or bury, you know, at the beach. They make sand dunes out of those. So they did that. So we put that feeler out there before we even found the egg masses on the, on the dug fur. So I was happy we kind of were ahead of the curve on that. But who knows if they read it? Who knows if they listened to it? Who knows if they showed it for work because it's Christmas holidays? I mean, who, 
There's a lot of who knows, you know. And who knows if the people even put it out for them to pick up to chip up or if they just throw it in the backyard, in the woods. I guess you would contact your, your senators and, and representatives down in Washington because a lot of the funding, I mean, we have, New Jersey has no money for this. We have our basic outlay, our basic budget. Um, so most of the funding comes from Washington. So that's who I would reach out to, to support or enhance the funding opportunities that are out there, not just for us, but Pennsylvania, New York, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. Virginia has a hot spot that they're doing good on, but it's a hot spot that they didn't know was there until recently, and they think it was there for maybe five years before the population got high enough that they found it. You know what I mean? And that also got moved through the stone trade. So we're going to survey the stone trade world. We're going to do almost like a door-to-door -door along the river, working our way in from Hunterton down to Camden to A, identify where a tree of heaven is, and B, is there anything feeding on that tree of heaven kind of thing. And then look at, look at vineyards, farms that are in those zones to make sure that they haven't accidentally jumped the gun. So if our guys come out and you're a vineyard um, or a nursery and, and our guys want to come out and they won't be our nursery inspectors, these would be special spotted lanternfly inspectors, this is all they're doing. Um, you know, welcome them on board, let them come in, don't kick them off your property because that doesn't help anything either. I would think so the first instar, the little black and white dot guys, are about the size of a text. You're not going to really see them unless you're in the right place at the right time. So I'd say, you know, in the May zone, probably not. I want to say my guess is when they start going into adults, and that would be anywhere mid-July-ish. So you get that red instar that's pretty big now, half inch, and you get the adults. And the adults are pretty noticeable because everybody kind of seem, seems to notice those. And the same with the red in stores because they're red. They're kind of something that you don't see every day. You know what I mean? So I'd say mid-July on. But pretty much we all have to be, you have to check your cars, check yourselves. I'm going to say anywhere from May till that first hard frost. And that's December-ish, November-ish, depending on the weather. We have no control over that anymore. It's crazy out there. So, but that's the time zone because that's when they're nymphs and that's when they're adults laying eggs until they die. Are the zones in Virginia and Delaware and New York as quarantined or as large as they are in Pennsylvania? No. They're not? No, that's correct. Um, is it possible to share the counties with us where in Virginia or Delaware or New York they've been found? Because like Don and ourselves, mm -hmm. we, we're nursery folks who ship into, I mean, I don't know right. about Don, but we ship into Virginia and Delaware and New York. And I'm, I'm sure it's like they'll tell our drivers, hey, you know, and our sales folks, when we're going in these, in these, right. to these customers, before our driver's getting back in that truck, I'd like to see him at least do a walking visual. Yeah, right, exactly. Right, exactly right. The Delaware one I know of, and that's Wilmington, but I don't know the Virginia one. But so, the, and again, Delaware was just one day. Yes. So that's like a regulatory instance. Okay. I don't know. I just know it's Virginia. And I'm sure. Uh, it's, Fre it's Frederick County in Winchester. Frederick County, Winchester, Virginia. Okay. Virginia. Okay. Virginia. Right. Not to be confused with Frederick. Frederick, Maryland. Right. I knew people were confirmed. Right. There, that was happening. So in the world of in insect control, it's like the IPM thing. You don't want to do prophylactic sprays. You don't want to spray the planet unless there's a problem that you can't control other ways. So you have to take that ballpark approach because if you start cutting out tools, then you're not ever going to win the fight ever, ever. That's how an insect is. Um, 
to answer your question, when will that ever happen? I haven't the faintest idea because there's a lot of research. Now, I know Penn State is doing a lot of research. Rutgers eventually will get in the game of research, but they can't. They're, Penn they're, State has a quarantine facility where they can work with them. Right. And so they can rear them. They can bring in natural enemies. They can do choice tests where they can subject the natural enemies to the different stages to see whether they'll feed on them or whatnot. And they're sharing it. Yeah, they are. Yes, correct. Right. Now, Rutgers, on the other hand, right. Now, Rutgers, on the other hand, their hands are tied because it's not here. So they can't deal with live things because if they do, then they've got to tell me and my rapid response team has to come in and they lose their, they lose their insects and they're not going to get very far. So it's kind of this catch-22 until, and hopefully we don't get there. So we have to rely on Penn State. Also, USDA is working on it up in Massachusetts yeah. in that special lab. A lot of research is going on up there, and there are the people sending folks over to Asia uh, and working, you know, to, to learn about it. But you know, some of these insects, they can, you know, they they can change, they adapt. They adapt, right? They adapt. Right. It's difficult. So it's hard. I mean, the insect control. Insects were here before us. They will be here after us. And there's winners and losers. We kind of. I can also show you a right. example of this thing. There are predators out there feeding on brown marmorated stink bug now after 14 years that weren't doing it when they first came here. And there's things eating their egg masses you would never expect, things like katydids and, and whatnot. And, and that's because of all the research that's been done with finding out that you know, they are finding them finally and they're feeding them. We think it's one of the reasons why the populations have decreased. Probably Pennsylvania. They probably have the list. Yeah, because they have the most studies and the most observations. Yeah, we go with PDA. Penn State, Pennsylvania Department of Ag, go on their website. I'm sure there might be a list on there. Or if not, if you don't see that, then jump to the Penn State site. I would, at first, I'd go to PDA, though, because they're good about putting pretty much everything known to man that they have, that they know, is on their website. So I would go there. And sometimes, too, remember what they said, sometimes they'll have reports of insects on things, but that doesn't mean that they're feeding on them, because first they'll just fly to something or hop to something and hang out there. doesn't mean they're feeding on it, they're just observed on there. But things that they saw feeding, they go, oh, yeah, these are big things like hops and grapes and that kind of stuff. Okay? <laughs>